because of that you can react and you can counter it, you know, and just get him. <laughs> I'm Jammer, and there's been a lot going on in the world of Nintendo lately. A ton of news updates, a ton of crazy stuff going on. I, I haven't had time to keep up with it all. So let's talk about the trailer that came out just this morning, being a new character in ARMS named Helix, or in other territories, uh, DNA Man. Which I don't know why they changed the name, depending on the region. They both work, like, they're interchangeable, I guess. DNA Man would have been fine in America, but, I don't know, Helix is a good name for him, too. So this is one of the leaked characters. Um, that was in the uh, arms direct on accident in that one loading screen area. There was like the little character portraits This is one of the ones we did point out I think there was four in total and this is one of the four so we still haven't seen the other three So those could still be coming in the next few weeks. I mean what one was the arms direct? I think it was uh, Was it two weeks ago now? So maybe every other week we could see another arms character reveal up until release Maybe that may be and then because there's probably those four and then there's probably some other characters we still haven't seen yet Potentially even ones we won't know until the game comes out anyways Let's talk about helix. I knew from the first time I saw him like this guy looks really cool at first I thought he kind of looked like the cactus guy from Final Fantasy um, I knew I knew when I saw his first porch. I'm like I really like this guy like, I cannot wait to see how he's gonna play now watching this trailer about him. Holy crap. I I I already found my main, like 100%. He's going to be my main character. He is hilarious. He looks so funny. He's squishing and squashing and going everywhere. But also, not only that is he hilarious, and I like him for that reason, but honestly, as far as competitive scene would go, I guess, or viable characters for that matter, he seems to be pretty strong. The special trait he has is just super mobile. While a lot of other characters have like those second jumps or can take hits like Mummy and whatnot, this character... You can hardly touch him because he's got so many different options. He can squash down and duck your punches. He can stretch up so then his chest area and his fist can come down up on top of you. Matter of fact, if you use that in combination with a jump, so if you squash and then jump out of your squash, you actually have a spring jump where you jump even higher than normal. In air, he can do those crazy dodges back and forth. He can do that on the ground too. Like he, I think he has easily the quickest dodge we've seen so far. So with all that in combination, it's like you can't touch this guy. So I almost wonder to maybe balance that out. I bet you if he does get hit, he might be like a glass cannon in a way. Or like he'll take maybe an extra damage or something like that. Just because he is so hard to hit. I almost am curious what button you click or whatever that can decide whether you go up or squash down or stretch up, you know. And how that differs from like jumping and then like, I don't know. Because I know the dodging was tilting with the controls. But what was, I don't know, what was the, all the other stuff? <laughs> I mean, it's probably one of the buttons or something like that, or triggers or something, I'm not entirely sure. So I'm really interested to see more about this character, but already from what I can see, I love him already. They've also been showing off a bunch of alt costume colors for these characters. Like if you do a one-on-one -on -one ditto match or something like that, you can one of the other, the other character can choose like a, a different variant. So I can see this guy having like a blue jelly instead of green or something along the lines of that. That would probably fit him pretty well. Well, I'd love to see it like orange or something absolutely obnoxious, like a yellow or something, you know? But more likely, it'll probably be a blue. Now, this is like mini analysis, trailer analysis, this section right here. Uh, I didn't want to do a full analysis, but there's a couple things I did notice in this trailer, and I'll definitely display it on the screen as I'm talking about it. So, first of all, they showed up a bunch of new fists with this character, being like these jelly fists that look like his main fist, or the fist that comes with that character. And what's interesting about these fists, they go, they both go out pretty quick, and once they um, drop, they actually have an arc, and they drop to the ground, and then they bounce forward. Uh, I don't know how many specific bounces. I think the most we saw in the trailer was two bounces, maybe three, and then he pulled it back. So it's interesting. So it can keep traveling after you throw it, which is like, I don't know. It's a neat touch. And when it hits an enemy, it kind of like, I don't know what it does. What does it do? It kind of like bounces them back, gives them a weird impact, you know, rather than like the normal fists usually do. Another thing I did notice is when he punched uh, Master Mummy, um, rather than how it hit on the other characters, you know how Master Mummy can take hits and keep going through them. An interesting thing was when he hit Master Mummy, it actually left jelly on his face. Now, I'm not sure what that actually is going to mean. Does it actually, like, is that actually a tribute the Jelly Fist have? So maybe if you hit an enemy enough times, it'll, like, slow them down temporarily? Or is this something specific just to Master Mummy because, you know, he can take those regular punches? So instead of just getting, like, exploded jelly on him, he gets knocked back. Maybe it just splats on his face and slows him down, or maybe like obstructs his view or something, or maybe that's part of the attribute as well. Where these, if you get hit with these jelly fists enough, I love calling them jelly fists. I have no idea what the real name is. If you get hit with these fists enough, perhaps it does. After a while, it builds up like a, a meter, an invisible meter, where eventually you get inflicted with jelly status, and it kind of either obstructs your vision, slows you down, makes you like sticky. I don't know. <laughs> So these look like 
some cool fists. I think they're a little bit slower than like regular fists to throw out, but because they have that bouncing attribute, they can keep going afterwards. And they have a little bit of half the knockback from it, I think. I, of course, you we have to play with all these fists to know how each one's going to play and how each one works out and which ones are the best, you know, best combinations. But other one that showed up was a returning fist that they showed last time with Min Min, her dragon fist. However, this one has an ice attribute rather than the fire attribute. In these, a direct, they talked about how each weapon's going to have different elemental attributes that you can unlock. So you can have a fire fist, a thunder fist, a uh, ice fist, you know, I think what was the other one? Explosion. There might have been something else too, I can't remember. But there's all these different types of elements, and that's the whole point of the game, is there are going to be different types of fists, and each fist has different types of elements. And I'm of the opinion that every fist in the game is going to be able to have every single element. In exception, maybe a few, few specific ones that might be, like, centralized to one specific type of element or something like that. But, I mean, or, or it could just have a select few elements. Like, this dragon beam could have just fire, the ice one, and maybe a lightning one as well. And it's going to be interesting how they might differ. I didn't go side by side with the fire uh, fire dragon and the ice dragon to see if like one had more knockback than the other. Um, did one come out quicker than the other? Because you know how the dragon fist works. It goes out delayed and then shoots its beam. So perhaps that could also uh, be influenced by it as well. But of course, each element inflicts a different status effect onto the enemy. All of which hindering your opponent, of course. The other new fist that showed off was, I don't think this is exclusive to... This isn't like a figure head or... A uh, central piece for Helix anyways. It could be another character, but this is like a Tiki Fist basically and where it's ba What it does is when you punch it It's like a slow stalking move and it goes slowly at the enemy and basically forces your opponent to react Which is actually really cool It's kind of like Wario's bike in Smash Bros where it makes your opponent it forces your opponent to do something and act out of it and because of that you can react and you can counter it, you know, and just get him. <laughs> they did punch it again later in the trailer where they went for a grab and it went a lot quicker like a normal fist. So I wonder if it has to charge up to do its stock mode. Because I know you can charge fists up. That's how you get like flame attributes on the little slapper one and stuff like that. So I wonder if that's probably how it works. If it doesn't get charged up, it might be just like a regular fist, maybe with a little more heft or something like that. Or punch is a little bit slower. So it's really not viable for using it, but you can do that to, for grabs and such like that. But when you do charge it up, it'll do that slow stalking move and it'll slowly, it'll like home at your opponent too. So if you punch like where they are here and they move over, it'll actually turn and keep going towards your opponent. It basically forces your opponent because it's a projectile coming at them. They can't punch out of the way as you, the attacker, it forces your opponent to do something. Somehow react, somehow act and giving you kind of the upper hand in the situation saying, okay, I know my opponent's going to do something. Now I just got to read and see what they're going to do and react accordingly to hopefully punish. Man, there is just so much in-depth stuff going on here with this game. Like, I can't wait to get my hands on with ARMS. Alright, that was a really long section on just ARMS. I didn't really expect to talk this much about the new ARMS trailer. Really, honestly. I thought this was going to be a, like a three minute section, but... Wow, I went over a lot more than I expected. <laughs> Anyways, let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about this new character in ARMS? Helix Boy, DNA Man, <laughs> whatever. Like, I think he is such a cool character, and his mobility... I don't know if that might be broken or not because so far he looks like, again, the most mobile character in the game, making him near untouchable. Of course, there are ways to hit him, don't get me wrong. And of course, that's just how they framed the trailer anyways, but I don't know. His power or his special ability in comparison to other characters so far seems so much better, so much better than all the other ones so far. I mean, Min Min's, what's her, a second jump and that's it? Like, he already trumps that with his squishing up and down crazy. For E3 plans, they just announced that there's going to be no live press conference again this year. I mean, that was kind of as expected. I was a little bit hoping because of the launch of the Switch, they might like go back to a live press conference, maybe just for this year. But digital events or whatever have been working out better for them in the past years. More information driven, you get more announcements. So I think it's still better in the end. And I also am a little biased because I wanted it to be live just because since I am going, I think that'd be an awesome first experience to E3 to like see a live press event of Nintendo. It's going to be better for coverage anyways, like the digital event, because we'll be back at our place. We'll watch it. We'll do a quick video, shoot that out, and then we'll buzz over to E3 so we can uh, go on the show floor and play some games. And then of course, ARMS comes out like a few days after that Friday, which is so weird to me. So weird. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about all these announcements. Give this video a huge awesome like. And if you haven't already, subscribe for tons on Nintendo, ARMS, uh, other stuff. <laughs> you know, all that related. So tomorrow, tomorrow, okay. They did another summon roll, um, 
a new focus, new summon role in Fire Emblem Heroes. I usually don't do the like the mid ones. I usually only do like the new one. You know, they do like usually they for their summon roles they do a new one and then do a secondary one that's kind of like recycled old heroes. But the focus characters for this game are for this one are four of the some of the best characters in the game. So it's like, oh crap. I guess I am have to do this one just because like I actually definitely want those characters. So you guys can look forward to that tomorrow. So uh, yeah, thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.